Hey everybody, happy Thursday. I am very excited for the chat that we're going to have today. I am here with a longtime friend and colleague in the public relations profession here in Philadelphia, Jim DiLorenzo. Jim DiLorenzo is the principal of Jim DiLorenzo Public Relations. He has been a staple in Philadelphia public relations. If you follow big Philly events, you've probably seen his name on a lot of press releases. Um, and, you know, Jim, I'm, I'm so excited to have this particular chat with you. We're going to be talking about the role of the connector. That person in your life or those people in your life who naturally love making connections, taking one professional colleague and introducing them to another, bringing them together and doing it in a genuine way. And Jim, you have made a career out of, out of you know being in that role, connecting big brands and big personalities with media who are looking for them. Um, you know, connecting people, you've, you know, you and I have, have connected and you've introduced me to some, some wonderful people. And, um, you know, I, I thought you were the person, perfect person to have this conversation with this, this topic was your idea and I, and I love it. And I know thank, you're, thank you, Brian. Absolutely. And, and, and I know you're coming at it from the perspective of, or heavily from the perspective of those in-person connections, yes. because, yes. because that. You know, the past few years, I think a lot of us have gotten accustomed to networking online. Um, Jim, you know, you have throughout your career, even the past few years, really done a, a great job of getting out there and getting people connected in person. Jim, I could keep talking, but I'm going <laughs> to send it over to you. Uh, You're killing you, me. For, for anybody listening who who you know ha has not come across you in the past. Can you give just a little bit of background of, of who you are, what you do, and in the context of that connector role and how, how key that's been to your professional career? Sure, sure. Well, thank you again, Brian, for, for inviting me, and I'm hopeful that this will be of interest to so many people today. I consider myself a professional storyteller, and I tell stories that bring positive attention to good works and good activities and good events. I stay away from the crisis communication. I emphasize telling good stories about good people and good businesses in a way that uh, brings their story to a greater audience, whether it be audience of buyers, an audience of customers, an audience of clients, an audience of attendees or, um, I'm, I'm hoping to work with on a project right now uh, with a school. Uh, so people who uh, who start to go to school, uh, you know, so who will attend that particular school. So all my life I have worked in PR and I didn't even know it when I started that that's what I was doing. But I had mentors along the way who, who guided me into a career in public relations. And especially over the last uh, seven years or so i've been really working very hard to redefine myself as as clearly as i can as a professional storyteller and getting out there and meeting people and working with people and trying to make an impact on an audience and on my clients to bring them together to achieve great things yeah. and, and I, I started this uh line of work, if you will, my, my vocation when I was in high school, although I did not know that at the time, that's what I was doing. And along the way, when I went to Villanova University, uh, a number of people there saw something in me and kind of guided me along a path. And I was very fortunate to have some very great people who were connectors themselves, uh, coaching me along the way and teaching me along the way and showing by example, how, how to, to work in that area. And sometimes you lose track of it. There are definitely days where you're like, oh, I'm not going to do that today. Or, or you know, I've been on my own now 25 years, this uh, July 1st, will be 25 years. So I started my own business July in 1999. And uh, through the, all the peaks and valleys, I've, uh, I've kept at it because it is my vocation. It is my life's work. 
Well, Jim, Jim, first off, congrats on 25 years. That is a massive, massive milestone. I well, just back in May, back in May I hit 10. Up. Yeah, so so you're, you're, you're giving me a new bar to, to, to aspire to, for sure. Um, and, you know, for, for having this conversation, you know, J Jim and I have, have both found our passion in public relations. Um, so you don't need to be in public relations to be a connector. Many, exactly. many great connectors are not in public relations. But if you want to be in public relations and be good and effective at your job, you better have those connector instincts because that's a big exactly. mandate of the profession. Um, exactly. And, you know, my my experience with, with being this connector role, you know, Jim, much like your story, uh, it didn't just start after I found a career path in public relations. I mean, it, it, I really saw myself starting to play that role during college, especially when I got involved with some student organizations and got into some event planning uh, as part of my, you know, student organization. Um, sure. I found myself reaching back to previous relationships and people I knew, matching them up with some of these new college relationships, all for a common goal and, and, and finding mutually beneficial ways to draw those parties together. Um, you know, when you talk about being a connector, empathy, you have to be a highly empathetic person and somebody with a high you know just eq and, and social iq as well um yeah i if, would agree with that if you're trying to bring two people together where it clearly benefits you and maybe one of those other parties but does not clearly benefit the other party you're you're doing sales at that point <laughs> yes if, if there's one side you have to really lobby and leverage be, because the value isn't isn't apparent now to be a great connector you need to really be able to put yourself in the shoes of the two sides you are trying to bring together exactly. um, and that needs to come natural to you and listen for anybody listening who might have flirted with that role in the past but want to embrace it a little bit deeper you're going to get better at empathizing with each size and inside and really be a, being able to level with them. Um, the more that you do it, the more that you are in those situations, right. you will understand what the different mindsets want. You figure out the nuances of personalities when you're trying to bring two different personalities together. Um, so that is, that's probably actually Jim, a good pivot into talking about you know, going back to those people who have maybe want to be a better connector professionally, right. but they don't know how to approach it. I think that's a great segue into that. Jim, can you take the lead there and sure. talk about how to how to do this naturally and effectively? Well, it is an acquired skill and you do have to work at it. And the one thing that has always kept me going with that is because the, the thing the thing that keeps me going is that if I don't meet new people or if I don't keep my connections alive, then I'm just in a vacuum. And if I want to effectively serve my clients and effectively serve um, in my vocation, I have to get out there and start making things happen. You know, you got uh, the, the, the old sports analogy, you have to put the ball in play. Uh, if you're going to, for me, I love going out and meeting people, uh, Some, especially during business hours. I'm not much of a nightlife guy anymore. Uh, I'm not much of a, of a, of a uh, uh, evening cocktail hour events, but I'm real, really, and, and uh, but I love that during the day, connecting with people, seeing people. So the way I kind of started it really was working as a volunteer intern at Villanova in the athletic department, specifically the sports information office, which is the, the uh, PR function in college sports. Uh, I would see these people coming into the office every day or every night for a game or, and you know, one way that led me to meeting these people or was that they always saw me there. 
being present and being there and being available and being open to work, open to volunteer, open to say hi, uh, not being in my shell. And I can, I can fall back into my shell very easily, but one of the things that I realized is if I'm ever going to, to do anything in my life, I have to kind of break out of that shell a little bit. So I would sit there at the scorer's table and I would be working at the game, but I'd be in the office before the game, uh, talking to the reporters that were coming in, uh, meeting some of these people for the first time, meeting people again for a millionth time. But each time they saw me, they would say, hey, there's Jim over there. You know, let's go say hi to Jim. Or I would say, hey, look, there's Howard over there. I'm going to go say hi to Howard. So that started in college. And that started when I was about 18, 19 years old. And I refined it over the years because as I'm getting older, as we all are getting older, uh, you realize, okay, go with your gut. Go over to somebody and introduce yourself. And if you get a bad reaction, don't worry about it. Just say, well, thank you. It was nice meeting you. I hope we get it and move on to the next person. But don't be one of those people that is at a networking event and says, hey, how are you? And the person that you're talking to or just started talking to starts talking. And then you're like this. Hey, there's Joe. I'm going to go over there and say hi to Joe. You can't be the 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 uh, the uh, flirty guy. You got to be the connecting guy. Yeah. And, I, and I was going to add on to that or, or grab your phone during that conversation or engagement. Um, no, I you know, when, I, when I go to those things, I turn the volume down and I put it away in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, remember that when you're at networking events, it's for true in-person human to human networking. Uh, when when folks see you with your head buried in your phone at, at those types of events, it's Good look. It's not. Yeah, it's not a good look. Theory, and, theory it, and again, there's. I'm. I'm of a different generation. I mean, when I started in this business, I was working on an electric typewriter, sometimes a manual typewriter. I was making photocopies or mimeographs, and I was using a telecopier, not a fax machine. We didn't have email. We didn't have computers. We didn't have uh, a lot of things that we have now. Landlines. Um, mailing press releases every Monday morning would, would, would fold and stuff tons of press releases and send them out to all the, all the newspapers, hoping that we would get there by Wednesday, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I've seen a lot of different technologies, but the one thing that doesn't change is persons, people's interest in people and the storytelling uh, part of, uh, you know, we talk about an elevator pitch. What is an elevator pitch except an introduction? And who are you making that introduction to? A stranger. Someone that you think you might want to meet. Someone that you think you might want to know. You can't just leave it to being sitting behind the, co the computer or sitting on the laptop or, or scrolling and texting. Uh, you have to actually look into their eyes. You have to actually shake their hands. You have to, have to uh, be visible and present. So that's what I do. I'm visible and I'm present and I try to get out there. You know, this week was not a good example because I spent a lot of time... Uh, tethered to the desk this week to do some things but yeah it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's like 90 degrees out right now you don't even right have right now <laughs> right but, but i i i, I want to use a recent example and when i say recent example i didn't I, I put together an event in new york city in september of 2022 for an author client of mine who was a really a big time name in sports marketing so we did it at a law firm uh, in New York on Park Avenue that was very connected with the sports world. And we got a very good attendance that night. I drove, I drove, I had probably in a room that seated 100, I had 200 people. It was, it was standing room only. We had a great panel, uh, Gary Bettman, the commissioner of the, NF, the National Hockey League. We had uh, uh, Zach Leonisis, who's uh, the, the uh, CEO of, uh, uh, monumental sports down in Washington, D.C., Wizards and Bullets, and, excuse me, the, the Wizards, the uh, Capitals, and other things. And then um, we had uh, a re the retired uh, CEO of Major League Baseball, and then we had my client. And we had this panel discussion, and I had spread the word amongst the New York media. I had spread the word against around the national sports media. We had a lot of people, as I said, in the room. 
And one of the people who was in the room came over to me before we really began the program. And he just came walking right up to me and says, hi, I'm John, John Zeit, and I'm working with a company called Vinyl Lab. And I really wanted to meet you and, and, and thank you for putting this event together. I said, well, well, thank you, John. Like, what does, you know, what does Vinyl Lab do? And he was telling me what Vinyl Lab does or what he wanted it to do. And then he introduced me to his friend who actually had brought him to the event, a gentleman by the name of Wes Mason, who's been the CEO of some major healthcare companies in the Nashville, Tennessee area. So we're having this brief conversation before the event begins, and I'm standing with them during the event because they didn't get there in time to have seats, so I figured I'd stand with them. And then um, I was milling about the room, taking photos, and then coming back to them. And at the end of the event, I said to them, when can we get together? I'd love to talk to you some more. I know this is a kind of a crazy night. You probably want to get out of here. He said, well, let's get together. He said, I'll give you my card, you know, and uh, we'll call. And that moment passed and that was in september probably around november i got my first call from him and it was only recently i've started i've been working with him for about two years now but out of that meeting i met he came over to me introduced himself to me and his partner and we had a nice conversation that night and then that conversation continued over several months until now i'm working with him as a client and what he told me i said why did you come over to me that night I asked him point blank, why did you come over to me that night? He said, well, it looked like you were the guy who was running the room. You were engaging with people. I could see you talking to people and looking them in the eye. And he says, I, and he told me, I hate going to networking events because I don't know what to do. So what I do is I f fixate on one person in the room that I think that guy must be interesting. I want to go up and talk to him. He said, and that's what I did. Now we're two years into a, a client colleague advisor role with him because he took the spur of the moment to come over and say hi to me based on his shyness and and, and discomfort in the networking events but at the same time he he had an agenda he had a reason to come over to me he he, he said i wanted to meet the person who i thought was the hardest working the the uh interest most interesting person so i came over to you wow you know but that's a, a networking connecting story that you know came to mind immediately when we started talking about this mm -hmm. well and and, 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 and and taking that approach the, the approach that he took is like okay i know i have to go to this event i'm uncomfortable at these events but let me mm -hmm. let me read the room let me read the room and say okay you know, let's let's go over there and introduce myself and he had his introduction well well oiled he he was very uh um forthcoming about what he did and what he was trying to do and it was just a nice conversation and that nice conversation that nice introduction has leveraged itself into a, over two-year relationship now mm -hmm. And, and I love that example, you know, because because you're right. I mean, when 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 playing the connector, um, you know, and in, in forming, you know, mutually beneficial relationships, um, there does need to be some purpose behind it. You know, earlier, right. I talked about the importance of having high social and and high emotional intelligence um, if you're going to be an effective connector. Because I have come across people who, while while well intended will make a connection you know or try to make an introduction on the fly and i and i get i run into this sometimes online where it's kind of a, a simplistic thought process oh well you're in pr you're in pr i should connect these two via email they don't ask my permission they connect me to this person i feel obligated to take the call it's kind of a waste of time not not that yeah. the other, not, not that the other person isn't isn't a good person to to maybe connect with um but you know time's a valuable asset and and to be kind of put in that in in that position forced to have that conversation when there really isn't a whole lot of purpose behind it um you know it isn't always the best way to play that connector role um but you, at you the know, same you, time you can take that you can take that introduction and conversation and 
maybe there's something in there that sparks like i don't think i'm i don't think i, I can help you today or i don't think uh, i don't have anything that immediately springs to mind but i know this guy or i know this woman i know this person let me introduce you to them and now you're playing connected to this guy who you don't necessarily have any, anything going forward with. But at the same time, now he knows, hey, you know, he introduced me to so-and-so, and that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Let me see if he knows anybody else that would might might be interesting, or let me see if I can find somebody that would help him. No. You know, part of what I do in the connector role is emulating or paying, I, I hate the expression paying forward, but paying forward something I witnessed when I was 18 years old, mm -hmm. and... I was visiting the Villanova University campus for the very first time on a day much like today in ju early June, and nobody was on campus because summer school hadn't started yet. And I'm wandering around the campus with my father and my mother. We go into the uh, field house, and there's a sign on the door over the balcony saying athletic director. And my father, out of nowhere, just goes running upstairs and says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if we can get it some time with him. And God bless the late Ted Aceto who was the athletic director for many years there, he came out of his office and said, come on up. And he spent an hour with me. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. And he talked about the things I might be able to do at Villanova, uh, why it would be a good place for me. And not only did he become a friend and an ally, but he was my first boss. Uh, he hired me the day after I graduated to be the assistant sports information director, which is a role I had been kind of filling anyway as a volunteer intern. So, the, you know, day after graduation, yeah, full time, give him a, put him on the payroll. And I worked with him for, for the next uh, 10 years or so. And that moment in time where he took the time to meet me, talk to me, get to know me, and then said, okay, well, when you come, when you come back in the fall, come in and see me. And he became a friend and an ally and a mentor for the next 14, 15 years. Yeah. And, and there, there is absolutely a level of intuition that I think great connectors have the gut reaction. They, they, they don't have to go off a recipe or a formula. You know, they're, they're not reading off of a sales script. You know, like they're like, like they, they, again, have that high level of intelligence and, and that, yeah, gut intuition. I mean, whatever we want to call it, the best connectors have that. They know people, they, they, they understand the nuances of, of personalities and, and just have a good sense of, you know, these two ingredients are going to make a great, you know, outcome. Yeah. So and, why and don't that's, we... that's, kind of, that's kind of where I want to be at this stage in my career yeah. too, is, you know, making those connections to people so that, you know, when my client is looking for somebody to help them with a podcast, or I have a client that's, that's looking for somebody to help them with uh, uh, gaining additional investors, or even, even, even as far, far as like, I meet a client for the first time, or I meet a person for the first time. And you've mentioned the events that I do. I, I asked him, he told me he had like seven kids. And I said, and it was the week before the fan expo Philadelphia. And I said, why don't you bring your kids to the, to the event this weekend? I'd be happy to have them as my guests, you know? And I was not going I wasn't looking at doing any business with him. I just was like, like with his story and what he was telling me about the, the nonprofit he was working with. So he brought a bunch of his kids from the nonprofit to my event that weekend as my guests. And they had a fantastic time. Mm -hmm. And now, hopefully, whenever he thinks of me, he'll say, oh, he, you know, he shared those tickets with me. Our kids had a great time. You know, let's let's reconnect. Let's have lunch. Let's do something. Yeah. And, and that's a that's a great perspective to look at it from, too, because we, we talked a lot about being that connector. Not everybody's going to naturally be a connector. Um, for the, for the, most, most people are not very effective connectors. Now, if, 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 if that's not really your persona, you're probably someone who still wants connectors in your life. 
I can't name very many successful entrepreneurs who do not have very key connectors in their lives. I mean, me, I, I'll tell you, I, I don't know if my sister's Heather's listening right now, but, but this woman is a super connector. It's amazing how, you know, being able to watch her, she's a much better connector than I'll ever be. And um, she just has those instincts, everything that we talked about. And, you know, having her as a sister, I mean, she has with my business, you know, I I can think of several years ago, I I was really struggling to find a good web developer. I cycled through a couple different ones and it it just wasn't a good match. I needed a web developer who was also a good communicator. Um, You know, sometimes they can, they, you know, they can speak code, but they, they can't, you know, they can't, they can't, can't they're they're not, their their listening mode is not turned on. Yep. Exactly. And, And sure enough, my sister connects me with her, her old college roommate who, who I you know, knew way back when, but I, I never put that together in my head, you know, to the thought to reach out to her. And, you know, now, I mean, that was, you know, seven years ago, um, you know, still my web developer. And I've ended up referring her business to from the work that I've done with her. It's, it's been wonderful, but again, you know, having that connector, you know, if you're related to one like me, that that helps a lot. Um, but 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 making sure I, I, my advice to anybody listening is just take a step back and think about the people in your life and who are those reliable connectors for you, and do not take them for granted. Exactly, exactly. You have to keep in touch with them. You have to keep. Um, you know, we're on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the perfect tool for this. Uh, you know, a lot of people will send you an invite to connect on LinkedIn and there's really non- nothing behind it except they saw your name or you get the spam people from from foreign lands who, who have a dubious connection to anything and you see that one or two of your connections are connected with that person. It's like, mm, maybe not. But the ones that you pick and choose, pick and choose, be intuitive, be instinctive, and be intelligent in the people you connect with on LinkedIn, because making those connections with people on LinkedIn will help you in connecting with people that are outside of your outside of your comfort zone, outside of your immediate sphere of influence. So you know, one of the ways I use LinkedIn is to, okay, I really want to learn something about this one particular company, or I really want to find a media member who I could potentially pitch to, or I want to find somebody who could be a guest on my podcast or things like that. So I use LinkedIn every day to just kind of massage my connections. And if I see somebody on there that's, that I say, oh, that would, would be perfect for, you know, I'm working with a, not, a, 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 star, a startup nonprofit, if you will. And how do I connect her with somebody who can help her with fundraising? How do I help connect her with someone who has written a story about a similar topic and you know maybe could do an interview with her. Um, how do I connect her with somebody who can uh, help her bring the kids in her uh, nonprofit to a, uh, a basketball game or, or, or a football game or something? So I massage my network. I look at my network. Uh, I call people sometimes and I think, mm, you know, we really haven't done much together. Or before I do that, I'll say to them, Hey, you know, what's going on with you? How are, how are things going? Or, and they might say, Oh, I've retired or I'm stepping away from this, or, you know, I'm no longer interested. That's fine. But I'm making connections with them and I'm communicating with them. And that's the part of the PR role, you know, at, at, that, that goes into, into the connecting with people, listening to their stories, hearing them out, paying attention, and then being able to make a connection in your head. You know, I was just reading the other day about so and so. You know, you're a, you're just about to graduate from Syracuse University with a with a bachelor's degree in public relations and communications, and you say you want to be a food PR, food and event and hospitality PR person coming out of college. You know, oh, you know, I just had lunch the other day with Irene uh, Baker Levy, and she would be perfect for you to meet because all she does is food and hospitality. So, you know, you make that connection with that graduating student with that 
person in your network, you let them get together and you step out of the way. Yep. I, I, I love that you used that example because literally an hour and a half ago, I was on the phone with, with a student looking for a, a comms role within a certain field. They called me, we chatted, I knew exactly who I wanted to introduce them to. And, and, and it's great to have those relationships. And again, when, when you can be that connector, I think the most important thing is don't always make it transactional. Listen, if, oh, if, if, you're, if you're an entrepreneur, yeah, you have to make money, um, but, it's, but, but not, not if, if, if every connection that you, that every introduction that you make, every time you connect two sides, if, if you're transactional about it in nature, you're not a connector, you're a salesperson. Yeah. And right. that's, that's you're, you're, being a salesperson, but um, no, I mean, if I'm, you're an entrepreneur. I, I play the long game. I yeah. play the long game. I've got people that I that I'm still in touch with that I met 40 years ago in Villanova. You know, I'm working with, with the school that I'm hoping to get as a client was brought to my attention that they needed somebody by this football player at Villanova who I met 40 years ago. Yep. 40, 44 years ago, actually. So I mean, we just. You know, and, and we're still connecting, we still talk. And he had an idea. He said, I'm going to introduce you to them. Amazing. Yeah. That, so, Jim, we are, I think we're just a little over time, but I, I want to give you the, the, the last word. I mean, for, you know, <laughs> with this whole That's conversation, I mean, what, what is the big takeaway that, that viewers, you know, should, should come away from this with? Say yes to opportunities. Say yes to showing up. Making, make yourself available and open and honest and you won't get burned. You may get discouraged, but you won't get burned. Making yourself available, saying yes to the opportunity. If someone says, hey, I'm going to this networking event uh, tomorrow night, would you like to come along with me? Or there's a networking event that you spot and you say, you know, maybe I should do that. Eh, maybe not. Just take the opportunity, say yes to the opportunity. And nine times out of 10, you're going to have something good come from it. I, I, my first event out of the lockdowns, the first public event that I went to after the lockdowns was in the um, early 20, 2022. Yeah, early 2022, I was invited by a longtime friend to go to the Coaches versus Cancer breakfast for the final, for the March Madness at the Palestra. And I hadn't been anywhere in public for, for over two years at that point, as far as without Zoom and things. So I went to the event, saw a lot of people I hadn't seen for a long time. Somebody saw me on TV the next morning who I'd worked with like 10 years before, because I was in, I was in a shot of somebody talking to Jay Wright and I'm standing next to Jay Wright talking to him. And I was carried on the local newscast and somebody saw me on TV and said, I'm going to give him a call. I think my client could use him. If I hadn't said yes to going to that breakfast, I wouldn't have had this client for the last three years, mm -hmm. which was a total stranger, but it was a connect. So somebody who connected me with them because another person connected me with that event, it all kind of the, the, the network and the links and the chains keep growing. Yeah. Amazing. And that's because I say yes to things. Love it. Say yes, people say yes. Um, Jim D. Lorenzo, Jim D. Lorenzo, public relations. Thank you so much. I love this chat. I know you and I are going to continue it offline. Um, everybody who tuned in, I hope you learned some things again, being that connector is valuable and having those connectors in your life uh, are, are, are so valuable, valuable. Don't ever take them for granted collect as many of them as you can. Um, thanks for tuning in this week, this month, and I will catch you all next month. Thanks so much.